Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the iCar Tech Center here in Appleton, Wisconsin, for our next installment of the iCar Repairers Realm. Uh, before we get started, anybody that's watching this live, if you have questions during this uh, presentation, you can enter those into the chat box and we'll get those questions answered for you. And if you're watching on demand uh, after the event was live, uh, you can submit questions to repairersrealm at i-car.com and we'll get those questions answered and get back to you. So uh, for those that uh, haven't seen us before, I am Bud Center, Director of Technical Products and Curriculum here at iCar. And to my left we have... I'm Jeffrey Poole. I'm the subject matter expert team leader here at iCar in Appleton, Wisconsin. And to the right we have Mr. I'm TJ O'Rourke, one of the subject matter experts here in Appleton. All right, perfect. And remote, uh, we have uh, John from Polyvance. And John, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is John Wilburn. I am the head training instructor here at Polyvance. Good. Well, thanks for joining us again today, John. So to today, thank you for having me. Yeah. So today we're we're continuing our series with with John and some of the Polyvance uh, repair materials and products, and we're going to talk about headlight repair. So I think one of the first things that we need to talk about when we're talking about headlight repair is, like anything else, we need to follow vehicle maker repair procedures and you know look at this and make sure that the vehicle maker has said they approve of repair. Uh, repairing headlights or they don't or if they if they have a statement on that um, it's obviously a business decision decision right there's there are times that you you know this makes sense I, know, I think there's a piece of this that you look at the technology that's built into some of the headlights um, particularly on the upper end cars but uh, that's trickling down to uh, a lot of the daily drivers as well and uh, making sure that headlight truly is a good candidate for any type of a repair situation yeah makes sense so, TJ, I know that you went through this with John while he was here and, and went through the, the headlight repair. Being a, a former tech yourself and, and doing this, did you see anything that was, you know, advancements in technology or something that you hadn't seen before? Um, working with John for those couple of days was really enlightening. Um, seeing the techniques that he used to bring some of these parts back to a uh, condition where it was able to you know, go to paint, uh, watching him work with the headlights. Um, we always wanted to have a safe and quality repair first and foremost, and then an invisible repair would be very nice. And I would think maybe five years ago when I was in the shops, it'd be very difficult, but watching John work with the plastic, you really can get this to almost an invisible repair. And uh, I think it's something, especially with supply chain issues and whatnot these days, more technicians might be considering uh, tab repairs on headlamps. So okay. if you had a headlight and that was the only thing holding up getting that vehicle back in the customer's hands, and that was a, a national back order part or something you were going to be sitting on for three months. Um, right. And you just let the customer know that it's a, yeah. it's a re make this one. Maybe you're waiting on the one that you're going to replace. Ultimately, you put a repaired in there for now or whatever it is. So, yeah. John, before we uh, roll the video and uh, go into the actual headlight repair and talk through that, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, just that. Uh, so. I've seen it time and time again, going into uh, collision centers for training, for doing demos with our products that, uh, you know, headlights get damaged uh, on even on the opposite side of where the actual collision happened. So, you know, just say that the, you know, the, the, the damage happened on the driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, it usually will just jar the rest of the, the other side of the vehicle and it will just snap off, you know, a tab maybe. And that may be the only thing wrong with that headlight is that since the car, ma the car made such a, you know, uh, or had such a, a heavy impact that it jarred it enough to just snap the headlight tab off. And other than that, the headlight is in, you know, perfect working order. So uh, I see that all the time going into collision centers. Okay, great. All right, perfect. Well, I think at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and roll the video from you and TJ working on some of these headlight repairs, and then we'll uh, come back for questions from the audience. John, headlights have changed an awful lot in the last decade or so. Yes, they have, uh, but there are a lot of similarities still as well. Um, tab design being one of them. Uh, a lot of the tab design on an older headlight, uh, you can see similarities with the brand new headlights. So tab design hasn't changed that much. Um, However, some, but not a lot. 
Uh, the type of plastic that headlight housings and lenses are made out of, um, that hasn't changed either. I can see that. We got a, uh, an older headlight. There's more than a decade difference in these two. Yep. And they are quite uh, the same. Mm -hmm. They are, as you can see, yeah, we've got like a 2012 model over here and a 2021 model here. And as you can see, the headlight tabs are very similar here. Would you be able to show us some tips and uh, procedures on doing a quality repair? Uh, absolutely. I have a headlight over here that has a tab broken off and we actually have the tab. So uh, we'll start off with that one. Sounds good. All right, TJ. So uh, this is the uh, headlight that I was talking about. Uh, the tab is broken on it and we actually have the piece that's broken off and these tabs on headlights usually do break off clean uh, from the increased amount of talc that they put in them uh, in the headlight housings. They, uh, they don't stretch like a bumper would. So when a headlight tab is put under stress, it usually breaks off nice and clean. And uh, we can start off by attaching this tab back to the headlight with staples and then we'll begin welding it. I remember from the last time you were here to get the, uh, the welder warmed up properly, we plugged in the air, uh, checked the flow before we turned on the heating element and then waited an appropriate amount of time for it to warm up. And we do have it warmed up and ready for you. Sounds good. So we'll start off by attaching this tab with some staples. All right, TJ, so I'm gonna begin by melting a couple of staples to secure the tab in position here. So I'm gonna bend this staple like so. Align the tab. Make sure we get it as close as possible. All right. Let off the heat. Allow the plastic to cool enough so that we can detach the stapler from the staple. That should be good. So I'll just slide the stapler off. Now I can let go of it. Let that cool. Is this a repair that might benefit from leaving the staple in the plastic during the repair? Uh, it actually is, uh, TJ. This is a repair that I might leave the staples in. Um, you could take them out or leave them in, uh, but in this particular repair, on this particular repair, I'm gonna leave the staples in. I'll just uh, cut them off and grind the ends down and leave them in for extra reinforcement. Now that we've got the staples in, We'll apply a piece of aluminum tape to the top side. And now we can flip the headlight over and start prepping the plastic for welding. Go ahead and remove the bungee so we can flip the headlight over. Get it in position so that we can get to the tab. All right, that works. Let's go ahead and bungee it back down. So we've got our die grinder with the pointed bit. And being that we are <clears throat> welding to an edge here on both sides of this tab, we're gonna need to V-groove to put a stitch, a cross stitch, or a T, if you will, on both sides of it here. So I'll start by V-grooving the crack itself, and then our cross stitch V-grooves. And TJ, we've identified the housing, this headlight housing, is being polypropylene. So we're gonna obviously use our polypropylene welding rod and 
this particular welder comes with natural polypropylene and a box of black polypropylene for doing headlight housings or fender liners, such parts that are black. Uh, we're going to go with the 01 profile, which is the round welding rod. That'll work great for this uh, particular repair. So we've selected that. Now we can, uh, now that we got it V-grooved, TJ, we can begin the welding process. And I have turned the flow down and the heat down uh, on the welder since we're working in such a little tight area here. So we're gonna preheat the welding rod, preheat the base material, the headlight tab. and begin welding. So here I'm gonna weld the crack itself and just go ahead and weld the T across the edge. Just wanted to shape that while it's melted. So I don't have to come back and remelt it to shape it later. So we've got one side welded in and I'll let that cool a little bit. Um, not down to room temperature, but cool some, just re-solidify before we weld the other side. Uh, the reason for that is, is with both sides being melted, I'm putting a little pressure on it when I'm welding and I don't want it, the tab to start folding down. So we will let that cool uh, just a little bit before we continue. Okay. We'll twist that off. And again, use our airless welder. Shape this up. And we will allow this to cool to room temperature before we move on to the next step. So we do need to let this cool completely before we move on. Now that we're ready to flip, we'll remove our bungee. Get our headlight positioned here. Wrap it back down. All right. Okay, so we've got the back side welded. Now it's time to V-groove the front and weld. And we put our cross stitch across the back side of the tab, so there's no need to put one on the front. And I get asked that all the time. Is it, is it necessary to put a uh, cross stitch or a T weld on the front? And uh, it's not. The back side, putting one on the back side is plenty. We will sh shape this up as we did the back side. Okay, so now we'll let that cool to room temperature 
and remove the staples and trim and shape the tab up uh, and get it looking good. Sounds good. First, we'll go ahead and snip off the ends of these staples since we're going to leave them in. Now we'll use our angled grinder to do some shaping. Right, I'll grab the airless welder, do a little more shaping here. And TJ, you can, you can repair these tabs back to new condition. I mean, as far as appearance and strength goes, um, I mean, you can make these tabs look like they were never broken and hold up as if they were never broken. Um, you know, you can put this little lip all the way back around the edge if necessary. Um, <clears throat> it's just a matter of, uh, you know, being patient with it and taking your time and just shaping the tab. Yeah. So it's just a matter of how far you want to take it um, appearance wise. Um, as far as strength goes, that's as strong as it can get right there. What steps might you have to do differently if you don't have the remaining part of the tab to reattach? Uh, so it is quite a bit different and I have a headlight over here I can demonstrate that on. All right TJ so we're gonna have to build this tab back in because we do not have the piece. So what I'll start off with is V grooving on both sides of this tab right here to have a place to start the welds. Okay. <clears throat> All right, there are V grooves. So now we'll apply aluminum tape to the back side. And TJ, we're gonna do most of the repair on the front side of this tab. Um, and then once we get all of the shaping done, we will uh, flip it over and just put one bead on each side of the tab right here to kind of lock the front and back side together. Um, but most of the work here is gonna be done on the front side and we'll get the tab shaped and formed uh, how it needs to be and then just lock the back side in with it. Mm -hmm. And we will apply two or three pieces uh, to get a nice sturdy platform for our tab here. Just w one piece is too flimsy. Um, it's not sturdy enough to build off of. So we'll put a few pieces on here. Let's go ahead and put three just to be on the safe side. Right, now we've got a nice platform here to work off of. We'll get a couple of the round sticks and the flat sticks. So I'm gonna begin, TJ, by welding an outline of the tab here, and then we'll fill it in. I'm just going to lay another bead directly over the rod that I just laid down. Fill in that middle section there. We will continue on with the flat ribbon.
we'll just make a few passes back and forth. This actually starts out kind of messy looking as you can see. Um, but that's what the grinders and the sanders are for to bring the shape back to life. So now I'm going to break this rod off and use the airless welder to do some shaping and see if I need to add any more fill rod. So I'm blowing nitrogen over it all to kind of make sure it's all melted so that the airless welder glides over it and shapes it easily. All right, now that we've got our platform there, we'll let that cool and do a little shaping on it and then continue on. All right, that's coming along nicely. All right, next we'll go ahead and flip it over and weld the back side. And now we'll smooth those with the airless welder. All right, now that we've got the backside welded, we've got the headlight flipped over, I'm gonna reapply this piece of tape so that we can build this headlight tab, this little lip on the tab here. And we're gonna use the round rod to build that little edge back. So we got the tape on there and we can begin welding. All right, there's one pass. We'll continue building. So as you can see, TJ, you can build these tabs back, um, whether it be a headlight tab, a bumper tab, um, a tab on any plastic part. You can build these back and reconstruct it uh, back to OEM appearance, um, even if you don't have the, uh, the piece. Well, it does look fantastic and you made it look very easy. I'm gonna grab another headlight to see if it presents any more of a challenge for you. That sounds good. John, you made those last repairs look pretty easy but the brake was right in a flat area of the tab. Now this headlight has some damage right through these reinforcing ribs. Does that make it for a more difficult repair? Um, those are a little bit more difficult to repair, um, uh, being that they have the ribs in them. Um, Polyvance offers a molding putty that you can use. Um, you knead it together, it's a two part. Uh, you push it down into these ribs and do most of the repair from the back side. Uh, once all the welding is done on the back side, you remove the molding putty from the front, uh, do some shaping with your airless welder, and uh, <clears throat> that will actually prevent those ribs from uh, being distorted out and it kind of simplifies the repair a little bit. Would you be able to show that? Uh, absolutely. Since this tab is broken completely loose on this one side, we'll need to insert a staple first to hold that in place.
All right, that should do it. So we'll go ahead and mix up some tab magic. And this was a this is a equal part mix. One to one. And you have uh, two or three minutes work time once you get it kneaded together, once you get it mixed together nice. You've got about two or three minutes of work time. That is close enough. We'll just press it all together here. Mix it and knead it. And we want to knead this together, mix it together until you do not see any white. All right, now that we've got the putty all in position here, pressed down into those ribs, we can flip it over and go ahead and do the welding on the back side. So TJ, now that we've got the back side welded, we can uh, remove the molding putty from the front, remove the staple. Let's remove that putty and take a look. Yeah, as you can see, the ribs in there have not been distorted out because the molding putty prevented that from happening. Um, a little shaping with the airless welder and remove that staple and this tab will be finished. Well, it looks almost as easy as the last two you did, John. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, TJ. All right. So I think uh, some really good examples of, of tab repair. I think that uh, I think you're right, TJ. I think John made that look easier than it than it might be. Uh, I think there's some artistry in that uh, in what you're doing there. So nicely done. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up to questions. And it looks like we have the first question, and that uh, does continuous heat exposure from being located near the engine compartment have an effect on headlight housing repairs? Yep, uh, a lot of times uh, headlight lenses are made from polycarbonate, uh, which they do have a welding rod for. Um, but again, like you said, with light passing through it, um, and it doesn't weld uh, exactly translucent or transparent, so it would be an imperfection that could cause, you know, visibility problem, issues. Yeah, so, so it could be done, but that's one of those business decisions. Not, yeah, where it's maybe business decision probably not recommended. Um, the next question we have is, do you have a plastic thickness recommended when trying to create a mounting tab from scratch for a temporary repair? So that's kind of like what you guys did with actually creating the tab. And uh, it looked like you used a couple of different uh, thicknesses and shapes, right? You had the round and the flat. Yep, yep. Uh, he started with a small one to create his outline, and then he used the ribbon to kind of fill in uh, more quickly. Uh, but again, you, the more material you add to it would create that thickness. Um, so again, you kind of want to fit the, the rod to the weld that you're going to do. Okay, great. Great. Let's see, by create, uh, our next question is, by creating an outline, is this just a rough guesstimate? Or were there some measurements made to reduce time? Also, would it take more make more sense to use a thick plastic coupon and shave it down than to weld it together? I'm well, not sure I follow that. I guess you'd have to be confident that if you were using a piece of donor material, that it was it. truly the correct donor material. So you've got the compatibility in that. Uh, in that weld environment. Um, and I think part of that question also was uh, you have to make measurements. Um, hopefully one headlight of the two is undamaged 
and to be able to use the undamaged one for a reference uh, so that it looked like it was supposed to and Is that and what you guys did in this case? You were able to look at the other one? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I was watching him whenever we did that first tab repair and put the staples in. Very steady handed, very steady with the plastic stapler. And I was thinking to myself, well, I'm not quite that steady handed. And I think I'd have maybe taken a, a bolt and a couple <laughs> washers and, you know, kind of sandwich it just to hold it, hold it perfectly where I wanted it. And then, uh, and then sunk those staples in there and, and let that cool off. But uh, I'm sure that uh, technicians can also get creative on forming templates um, or, or using something as, as a support device that helps positively locate the original hole and, uh, and something that's just temporarily there partway through the repair to, uh, to help recreate the exact shape they're looking for. Great. And let's see, we've got another <coughs> question, but it looks like we've got part of the question. It looks like it says, are taillight housings usually made from, I'm guessing they're saying the same materials, same type of plastic as headlight housings? Um, what we found from our examples and the, the lamps that we were using for the demonstration is uh, different parts of the assembly were identified where the housing may have been polypropylene uh, the lens would be partly carbonate. So again, if you, if you can, definitely look for the identification uh, markings on the, the assembly of the part so that you make sure you use the right filler rod. Um, and then if, if that's not available, then the, the weld test, which we, we showed at a previous repairs room. Yeah, I've noticed most parts do have the ISO code somewhere, somewhere on them, even some of the small stuff, as they look at re recyclability requirements and things like that, end of life. Yeah, so it looks like uh, the, one of the next questions was how do you identify the plastic? How do you, so there's, there's obviously the, the symbols and the, you know, on the, on the plastic that typically you can use to identify the plastic. Yep. Uh, ISO codes, um, vehicle maker service information will sometimes identify different parts of uh, the vehicle and what they're made of, uh, both steel and plastic. Um, and also the, uh, the weld test where you would in an unsuspecting place, uh, you know, do a test, make sure that it sticks, you can pull on the, the weld to make sure that you can't just, you know, release real quick because uh, different plastics usually don't like sticking to one another. Yeah, we, we saw that in the bumper repair example. I think you mm -hmm. guys showed that, uh, that when it's the wrong material, it won't stick, you pull on it, it'll come right off. So, okay, great. All right, well, at this point, it looks like that uh, is all of the questions we have for today, so again, if you're watching this uh, in the on-demand format and you have questions, please send those questions to repairsrealm at i-card.com and we'll get those questions answered for you. Thanks for joining us.